Peace, everybody. This is your brother, Mark Lamont Hill. Welcome to the first episode of the Classroom in the Cell podcast. And also joining me, and more importantly, tell them who you are, brother. My name is Abdul Muhammad Africa. All right, all right. I'm messing with you. Mumi Abu Jamal, uh, the co author of Mark Lamont Hill of A Classroom and a Cell. So that's right. This is the audio pod version. How about that? That that that's right, y'all. So a, a long time ago, it feels like a, like a many moons ago, but it was it was uh, twenty ago. yeah, it was like the end of 2011, 2012, Mumia and I published a book called The Classroom in the Cell, where we were breaking down the world, analyzing Black life, Black culture, politics, everything uh, from our respective vantage points. The classroom was where I was as a professor, and the cell where Mumia at the time was on death row. Uh, but it wasn't just about that. We also were breaking down the reality, as Mumia likes to talk about, of how even when you're out in the world, you're still uh, in a cell. And even when you're in that cell, there's a lot of learning going on. So we wanted to, we wanted to wrestle with those, t- those things. So we're going to talk about everything on this podcast, not just politics, not just mass incarceration, even though we're going to talk about them things. We're going to get personal. We're going to talk about – man, this is going to be so much M- – M- what's the kind of stuff you want to talk about? I, I'll follow your lead, brother. Uh, you know, I got a big head. I can go, you know, many places. I've had to. <laughs> if I don't travel in my mind, I don't travel. So let's travel. Let's uh, remember Dr. Perry Johnson. Let's yeah, yeah, yeah. Travel. You dig? So yeah. yeah, I like that. I like that, man. Yeah. The thing I, one of the reasons I wanted to do a podcast with you also was because I don't think the world understands how complex you are. You are a political prisoner. You're a black radical. You're a former Panther. You are a war with a journalist. Pennsylvania State Correctional Institution, Mahanoy. This call is subject to recording and monitoring. You are all of those things, but you also just silly as hell and funny and insightful. <laughs> <laughs> and I want people to see all the sides of me at Uja Ball, man. You ready for that? You ready for the world to see all that? Let's do it. Let's do it. So much is going on in the world. When we started our conversations back, you know, decades ago now, um, we started with this Obama question, with the black president question. It was like, yo, do you think he could do it? You think he's going to be able to run for president? You think he's going to win presidency? And now, you know, we all, you know, 20 years later, almost, you know, from, from when Obama got that Senate seat, 18 years, you know, we're sitting here asking similar questions. You know, what is the future of American politics? What's the future of the presidency? There's a whole bunch of people running for president, man. I don't like none of them. What, what, what you think? Well, I like Cornell West. <laughs> mm, yes, yes, yes. Shout out to Cornell. Cornell's brilliant, man. And he's, you know, he uh, he comes straight from the muscle, straight from the heart, straight from the spirit, and straight from the soul, which makes him a bad politician, but a pretty good human being. And, uh, you know, that's usually the case. I mean, our politics... It's so sad and so bad because uh, they don't reflect the aspirations of the people. They reflect the selling of a candidate, and mm-hmm. they reflect the market forces, right, that run. This is a call not- from Pennsylvania State Correctional Institution, Mahanoy. This call is subject to recording and monitoring. Yeah, yeah, not just this country, right, Yeah. but much of the world. You know, because, uh, you know, it's about the dollar, and and, and that rules everything. And, uh, you know, politicians bow down to that first. That is their God, you dig? And that's where they're coming from, man. They are, Marx said, Marx and Engels said, that the state is the executive committee of the bourgeoisie. Mm. And uh, they were right, you know, these cats. They they didn't get it right on the colonial question. They didn't get it right on the race question, but they got it right on the economic analysis question. So let me ask and, you about that. Let me ask you yeah. about that because that, that's one of the challenges that a lot of us have right now is yeah. I get being a third party candidate. I get running mm-hmm. for pre- the presidency. You know, and I've been a Green Party member for for, for decades now. Right? I, I, I almost mm-hmm. every time I voted for president, I voted for a non Democrat. You know, I think 2020 was the first time. Uh, that I didn't uh, vote green, you know, but right. right now in an era where DeSantis is on the ballot, where Nikki Haley's on the ballot, where Trump is on the ballot, where fascism is on the ballot, 
And white people have demonstrated to us that they will vote their whiteness more than their interest by choosing Donald Trump. You know, women have shown, white women have shown that they will vote their whiteness and their white womanhood, you know, even if it means rather voting than their some, gender. Rather yeah. than their gender interests, you know what I'm saying? So if we right. know that, you know, is there, is, is, there, is there ever time to be pragmatic? I'm, and I'm asking, I'm, I'm not, this isn't about no, Cornell no. per se, but it's about, you know, what do we do? Uh, well, you know, I mean, that's a hard question. But one of the easier answers is vote for what you believe in. And, mm. and you know, if most of us don't vote for what we believe in, but we vote against someone we consider, right? The right, we vote our fears. Is. Right, we vote our we fears, vote not our fears. aspirations. And when we vote our fears, we're always going to come to a dark place because it was generated, right, in a dark place, mm. right? We're not voting for, we're voting again. You know, most of the people who voted for Biden weren't voting for Biden. They were voting against Trump, right? Right, right. And, and you know, like, if, if that's your yardstick, they will always find someone who will be, you know, the boogeyman, um, the evil creature. And they will manipulate your vote, you know, like every time. Instead man, but, of voting but, but, for what, hope. What, what if they are evil, though, man? Like, like again, like normally I agree. They, when it's Bush and right, right, right. it's, it's like, all right, they're all about the same. Let's, let's, let's establish right, right. a grassroots movement. Right. But Trump seemed like he was something else, man. He seemed like he was a different animal. And maybe he wasn't. Maybe that's the boogeyman stuff you're talking about. But he felt worse to me. He, his presidency, I, I watched people die during COVID that didn't have to. And I couldn't. And so I, I, I vote, you're right. I voted for Biden. And it's the first time I voted for a Democrat in my life. I voted uh, for president. And, and I did so because I couldn't sleep knowing right. that, you know, I was, I was going to not do everything I could to keep Trump out of the White House. And there's strategic things we could do. We could vote trade like I did, you know, in, in, in 2020. We could do uh, strategic balloting. You know, I, I, I'll vote my, my conscience in California, Texas, where it don't matter, we vote our interests right, right. in the swing states, and, and you know, and we can trade with folk who live in different states. There's all kinds of things we can do, but at the end of the day, man, it's just it's a moment where I I feel really distressed because I don't want to see Joe Biden as president. I don't. But guess what? Guess what? We're back at the same place, aren't we? It's almost <laughs> like you know what I mean? Musical chairs. We sat yeah. down in the same chairs we got up out of. Because you ain't never lie. This cat has a shot. That's unfreaking real because, and you you preface this with your comment about there are millions of people in this country, and you said white people, and it's true, but not just white people who are kind of cool with fascism. <laughs> you yeah. did. I mean, Hell yeah, cool January sixth, we saw the face of that, and that was the average American person. Because again, what motivated them was also fear, and I'm gonna tell you why. And, you know, in part, some of their critiques were genuine from this perspective. Mm. They had lived through NAFTA, right? Yeah. Which sucked jobs out of the big city, right? Because yeah. corporations said, we, we don't need labor that's American. We can go to Mexico, right? We can open a Maguila Dora in Mexico, and save money. Or we can go to Vietnam, a communist country, and if that ain't enough, we'll go to China. Right. With this, and we're going, because the objective of capital is always what? More capital. More capital, right. <laughs> you dig? And they, that's, what, that's what actually created this feeling of betrayal in white working class guys, you know, in their 40s and 50s, because they looked at the future and said, this shit is bleak, bruh. Yeah. And it is bleak, because that's the story that capitalism, capitalism told white workers, if you stick with us, we'll look out for you. Mm-hmm. Right? Right. Well, they were, they were selling. They weren't, you dig? I mean, because, yeah. you know, capital ain't got no, capital only loves capital. Right. It ain't got no friends. It ain't got no allies. It ain't got no partners. Capital don't need no partners. You did? It don't. It don't. What did Marx say? Marx and Engels said that 
capitalism, right, mm-hmm. is a revolutionary form of economic development because it destroys and breaks down all Chinese walls to attain its objective, which is more capital. Like nothing stops its its movement. This is Marx and Engels talking. Right. You dig? So that ain't they ain't lying. I mean that you know, if you look at it, you're like, damn, that's that's true. So, you know, I think that it's time for us to begin to think seriously about decolonizing this political system in this country, right? And to begin to get people voting again for if they want to vote, because sometimes a no vote is a vote, right? Yeah. But getting them to vote what they believe in their hearts instead of, and I'm not talking about fear. I'm talking about even hope. Mm. And then demanding that that personality, because that's all it is, like a, a simulacrum, it's like a puppet. Say, listen, you got to do A, B, and C. Are you out? You out, homie? You know, and mm. it's not a friendship thing. You know, right. you're hiring somebody. You know, you hire somebody to do a job. Well, do do this job, homie. Right. You dig and see. If you know, then we're not oscillating between fear and fear. We're oscillating between a hope and a be- and a better hope, a brighter hope. The greater evil is still, the lesser of two evils. It's still evil. Right. So you know, what I mean, unless we go in there, man, we we're going to a dark place. Now, this is America, and this cat is like a heartbeat away. Yes. <laughs> and, yes. You know, I didn't see it coming, but that's what time it is right now. So, man, you, know, you got to do what you got to do, bro. You got to do what you got to do, and, and we got to figure out what 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 it is that we have we one minute do. left. And and that's right. going to be that's going to be determined by what our ultimate political objective is. Is it is it is it a radical reimagining of the world? Is it a reorganization of the means of capital? Uh, or, or the relations of capital? Is it a dismantling of the mechanisms of capital? Is it, or is it just to get rich? Is it just to fit in? Is it just to have a, a shot at this imaginary American I- ideal that privileges the one percent at the expense of most of us? You know, so I mean, those are the questions we got to ask. What, what we want out of this thing is going to determine what we put into this thing, and I think that's so important. Yeah, brother. Well, look, I know we're running out of time. I want everybody to also understand, as we talk on this podcast, you're going to hear the interruptions from the state correctional facilities. We not cutting them out. We not editing them. It ain't them. us, bro. It, it ain't us. It ain't <laughs> us. And we want you to understand what it's like to have 15 minutes to talk to somebody, man. We want you to understand how the Got state it. interrupts and, and intervenes in our lives. So we're going to, you're going to hear it all, whether, with warts and all. Warts and all. You're going to hey, hear all that's of That's what I'm talking Thank about. Thank you, you for using you, brother. Secure Love you, man. Goodbye. Love you, Moo. Everybody, you listen to the first episode of The Classroom and the Cell with Mark Lamont Hill and Mumia Abu Jamal. If you want to listen to more of this content, go to at Mark Lamont Hill Official on YouTube. Hit the subscribe button and you'll be updated on all things The Classroom and the Cell.